Hello viewers and assalamu alaikum. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can find your next apartment, condominium or flat in Bangkok, Thailand. Now, I'm living and working in Bangkok, Thailand for around two years and I've been through this process quite a number of times and I would like to share my personal experience and some pro tips that would definitely help you in finding the best apartment for you available in Bangkok Thailand so first thing first where will you find all these listings for available condos uh, for rent in Bangkok so there are a few popular websites that I would recommend you should look at number one is uh, dot property.co.th ddproperty.com thailand-property.com um, renthub.co.in and uh, hitflat.co.th uh, there are some facebook groups as well where you can find uh, a lot of these um, apartments that are available for rental in bangkok thailand and you simply can search on Facebook like uh, rent apartment or condo uh, Bangkok and you'll find those uh, groups as well that are uh, helpful in some cases as well but in my personal experience uh, these websites are uh, more than enough uh, to help you uh, find the best suitable deal in the market you can use a lot of search filters um, to narrow down your search uh, whether you're looking for one bed or a studio or a two bed uh, what kind of a, a square meter size range uh, you're targeting uh, what um, kind of um, features you are looking for whether you're looking for a furnished apartment or an unfurnished apartment or maybe partially furnished apartment uh, similarly um, you can also uh, set your price range that you are actually looking for flats in a particular uh, price area now uh, a lot of rental deals that are available on these websites are in some cases taken uh, until you contact them or um, they are not very responsive in some of the cases so make sure when you cast your net you cast it a little wider uh, I would recommend you to uh, get as much information as possible online or on whatsapp through um, uh, messaging or text communication so you know in advance what kind of uh, deal you are actually looking at you should ask for any missing information like what is the size in square meter uh, is a one bed two bed or a studio uh, you should know in advance whether it is partially furnished or full furnished or unfurnished uh, you should know in advance the uh, monthly rental uh, for that particular condo uh, you should also um, you know in advance the contract duration is it six months is it uh, one year the standard contract duration in Bangkok Thailand is a uh, one year and then uh, you should know uh, the requirements for uh, advance and deposit the standard uh, requirements are one month rent in advance and two month rent in deposit so you have to pay three months of rent before you move into a particular condo or a flat other uh, information that you should know in advance that what kind of a community facilities are available in the project uh, do they have swimming pool uh, if yes then how many uh, do they have a fitness center or a gym area and um, standard rule is that you don't have to pay any additional uh, amount or fee to access the community uh, facilities like swimming pool or fitness center or gym uh, but it is better to clear it before in advance than be sorry at at a later stage ask for all these information the pictures latest pictures and videos if possible uh, through the messages communication whether it is line or whatsapp or through website communication the other thing that you should be asking um, beforehand is about the parking if you have uh, your own car um, or your own bike make sure you ask in advance uh, about parking and the general rule here is that for one 
uh, apartment or condo you get one parking once you have this information available for uh, different uh, condos uh, you can then create your own shortlist of apartment that you are uh, actually interested in once you have the shortlist uh, available uh, with complete information if the information is missing uh, strike a conversation uh, with the owner or with the agent or the contact person and get the information and then decide which apartment you should select to uh, schedule an appointment to go and see those apartments the owner or the agent will also ask you uh, about your profile like uh, where you are working uh, in Bangkok and uh, for how long you have been in Thailand and uh, how many people will move into the apartment or condo um, like your spouse or kids maybe so uh, they're interested in that and then they'll ask about your uh, country of origin or uh, the country from you have actually came from so um, your nationality the number of people uh, that will move in and uh, for how long you've been in Thailand or Bangkok and where you are working um, and uh, probably they'll ask in advance uh, about your agreement to uh, be able to sign a yearly contract uh, so this is uh, some information that they'll ask initially and if it's an agent who you are uh, talking to then he or she will pass on this particular information to the owner. Now um, this information is uh, basic information that every agent or owner will ask. Uh, in some cases um, and in my personal experience uh, I've saw this that um, I've been turned down uh, because uh, the owner uh, was uh, not willing to rent it out to any expats or any outsiders or foreigners um, so but the percentage for that uh, in my experience is around uh, five to ten percent um, majority of the cases uh, uh, they're uh, very well open to rent it out to expats, foreigners or people uh, from other countries. Uh, but uh, this is uh, a small percentage uh, where uh, you will be turned down because you belong to a uh, different country and you are not a local Thai citizen. Uh, on the day of uh, your appointment, uh, make sure you reach on time. If you're going through your own convents, uh, through your car or bike maybe, then once you enter the parking, they'll give you a parking ticket. You have to ask the owner or the agent to put a stamp on the parking ticket and once you go out, the, the gate uh, guards will check if there's a stamp. They won't charge you any parking fees but if there's no stand then they're going to charge you uh, a parking fee and by the way parking fee can range from 40 baht all the way to 200 baht so uh, make sure you get it stamped make sure uh, you visit all the facilities as well besides just the apartment um, facilities are important and uh, because they include uh, swimming pool um, fitness center or gym uh, open areas and uh, parking uh, and uh, uh, laundry and mailbox uh, garbage area generally each floor has a particular uh, room for uh, garbage collection where you can put your garbage and you have to uh, separate out garbage based on the type of garbage other thing that you should ask for is uh, what is the per unit charge for electricity and what is the per unit charge for water now in uh, townhouses and in condominium uh, project you are not allowed to use uh, gas for uh, cooking and other stuff so all the cooking stoves and ranges and ovens are all electronic so uh, the only two utilities that you will ever need in your apartment or townhouse is 
the uh, electric city and the water standard uh, unit charges uh, for uh, electricity across Bangkok is uh, somewhere around 3.8 for bath uh, because uh, this one authority Metropolitan Electricity Authority MEA who is responsible to provide electricity throughout this uh, Bangkok uh, area and the greater Bangkok area and uh, as far as water is concerned this can vary from uh, 17 uh, bath per unit to maybe 20 21 bath per unit um, so, so it, it can vary from project to project and um, while you have to pay your electricity bill to MEA directly um, there are ways um, you can pay online MEA has a mobile app as well you can register and you can pay through your uh, bank account uh, a, through credit card or debit card and then you can also pay MEA bills uh, uh, via different convenience stores like uh, 7-eleven or family mart and and, uh, and and a lot of um, bank branches as well um, as far as uh, water bill is concerned uh, you have to pay your water bill in the juristic office now each of these projects have a juristic office that is actually responsible for uh, the whole uh, project administration and maintenance and everything that is related to a project is uh, basically um, taken care of by this juristic office so you can pay your uh, monthly uh, water bills uh, at your juristic office which is normally at the ground floor uh, of your uh, building so once you have sh uh, shortlisted among those uh, condos that you have visited start uh, making an offer to those uh, shortlisted condos put an offer and uh, mm, see uh, how the agent or the owner respond and um, don't be rigid in your uh, negotiation be flexible uh, be open because it it totally depends on the time of the year circumstances condition neighborhood district the market at that time uh, so there are a lot of factors that are into play so be flexible don't be rigid uh, try to negotiate but don't uh, get stuck at one point in time make sure you are flexible enough to move back and forth uh, but do negotiate because negotiation uh, uh, helps you in bringing, bringing down the uh, rental price. There are multiple factors that impact uh, on the monthly rental for a particular condo. If it is in downtown area, that would be a little more expensive. It is in the suburbs of the city, then it would be cheaper. Uh, the other thing that uh, will have an impact on the rent is the condition of the building if it's a brand new project that would going to be uh, considerably expensive than a project that is like uh, a bit old five years to ten years or fifteen years uh, it depends the older the project is the lower the rent is and the newer the project is uh, the uh, expensive the rent is the other thing that will have an impact on the rent is uh, whether it is close to uh, the metro station or not so depending on how close you are to the metro station that will have an impact on the rent as well once uh, you get the uh, final offers from uh, different uh, owners and agents then uh, proceed in making a final offer to uh, whichever the uh, final deal you you actually selected uh, for yourself and uh, um, give a green signal to the owner or the agent schedule uh, the final contract signing day and uh, they will ask your uh, passport scan copy 
and your work permits can copy so you can send them uh, through whatsapp or line or if you're not comfortable with doing that then you can hand over them a printed copy of that and uh, agent or the owner uh, will prepare the uh, contract agreement and uh, you might have to uh, bring your original passport and work permit on the day of signing of the contract in my personal experience in one of the case i was asked by the owner and the agent to show the original passport and work permit which i showed to them uh, but in another case uh, neither owner nor the agent asked the original passport and work permit so um that's uh, how it works maybe they'll ask maybe they won't but it is recommended to keep the original passport and work permit with you on the day of signing of the contract on the day when you're signing the contract make sure that you have read the contract completely and uh, look out for uh, different clauses like termination clauses um, clauses where they can forfeit your deposit um, the standard uh, law the standard practice here in Thailand in Bangkok Thailand is that uh, if you um, end the contract uh, before the expiration of the contract or before the duration of the contract then uh, the deposit won't be uh, returned to you and will be forfeited by the uh, owner so uh, your deposit standard deposit is a two-month deposit and you're going to lose that deposit if you um, leave the condo and end the contract abruptly um, so make sure you read those conditions uh, make sure you uh, read the wear and tear clauses uh, that who will pay for um, normal wear and tear of the uh, apartment uh, fixtures and um, make sure you read uh, carefully about the um, monthly rental payment uh, standard contract that I've seen so far is that generally there's a range that you sh you have to pay at the very at the first of every month uh, the your monthly rental and the buffer time goes all the way to uh, fifth of the month and you you can request uh, the uh, owner to extend it to maybe seventh or tenth uh, every month but whatever you actually commit in the contract then you have to make sure that you uh, follow that as well in 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 some contract i've seen this clause that uh, they mentioned that if you do not pay uh, up till the date that is mentioned then you will be uh, fine with a fee on a daily basis a hundred baht per day or things like that and then there's uh, also a clause that if you fail to submit a rent for one month or two months it depends on contract to contract then you'll be fined a big amount uh, and ultimately you will be asked to uh, leave and your contract will be um, cancelled so make sure you read all the uh, details all the clauses of your contract and you know, once you sign the contract uh, there will be three copies of the contract one one will be for you uh, one will be for the owner and one will will be uh, for the agent and uh, once you sign the contract then you have to pay uh, one month advance uh, and two month deposit then and there in some cases I have to pay before um, sign the contract so once once we gather uh, to uh, do the signing final signing of the contract I first transfer the amount and then I sign the contract in some cases I sign the contract first and then uh, then and there I transfer the amount uh, to the uh, owner account the uh, payment for uh, the advance and deposit uh, I generally do the payment through uh, direct bank transfer because uh, in this way you don't have to deal with the cash you can uh, you, you will have a clear record of uh, payment being made to the owner 
uh, owner's uh, bank account so you have a record as well uh, in your um, debit credit sheet that this particular amount was transferred to that particular person with, with this particular title on that particular day and um, generally I put up uh, in the comments that it's a deposit and uh, a two month deposit and one month advance um, so uh, that 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 will serve as a reference for me and that why this payment was transferred to uh, for a monthly rental payment again um, I'm I personally pay directly uh, a bank transfer uh, so uh, I make sure uh, I've set up a monthly reminder uh, at the first of every month that uh, remind me to do the payment to make the payment uh, and I use uh, direct um, bank to bank transfer uh, if, if I'm on my uh, laptop then I'll do it using um, online e-banking and if uh, normally I used to do this through my uh, mobile application uh, banking mobile application and uh, through that I can easily transfer the monthly rental to the owner your contract uh, also mentions the day when you will actually get the possession or handover of the key cards uh, you will also get the uh, access cards or access keys for parking as well as uh, community facilities like swimming pool and um, a fitness center and other uh, common facilities uh, mailbox key or mailbox access card so make sure you have all these keys available and generally um, your contract uh, have uh, an appendix where it lists down all those keys make sure on the handover day when you're taking the position of your condo or apartment uh, you make a detailed uh, listing uh, detailed pictures or detailed video of any faults that you see on that day because uh, when you you end your contract then uh, th this particular detail will help you in resolving any conflicts uh, with your owner that uh, a particular fall was already there when they uh, give the position it to you so I had a bad experience in the past where uh, there were some falls some minor falls um, that I actually have to pay for once I was leaving and um, although I told this to the agent that these falls were already there but because I didn't have any proof um, I, I actually end up paying for that and uh, so make sure uh, you uh, if you find any falls whether there's any wear and tear on the floor on the walls uh, on any fixtures or any other items on door windows um, any locks any leakages make sure you make a picture um, and a clear picture and a clear video if possible in front of the agent or the owner at the time of handover and uh, make sure you mention it in the uh, appendix as well because you will actually be ticking of each of the items by verifying that once they're handing over the apartment to you, you whether you have verified that you receive all the furniture items that are mentioned uh, whether uh, you have received all the keys that are mentioned and any other item that is in the apartment uh, that were given to you at the time of handover so make sure if you find any falls in in any of the apartment items or apartment itself you make a clear picture or video and you mention it in the appendix as well that will definitely help you a lot when you will be um, closing the contract and you're moving out make sure that uh, on the day of uh, handover or maybe before that you get your parking stickers for your um, car or your bike and um, and and by the way they they will also going to mention uh, these parking stickers or uh, parking access cards in the appendix list of items uh, of the contract as well so make sure they are mentioned there as well
so guys uh, that's it i think uh, these tips will help you in finding your next condo or apartment and if you think that i've missed something or you want any other information related to apartment hunting or any other thing then do uh, comment below and i'll reply you back as soon as possible thank you